Hi guys, um, I'm just gonna do a quick one of how um, a narcissistic relationship is different than a neurotypical relationship. And you know some of the way they look at things and what what you can expect in you know what you can expect in a normal relationship and what doesn't occur or what does occur in a narcissistic relationship. So, um, so in in a narcissistic relationship, you know these these are things that you would expect to have in like a normal neurotypical situation, normal neurotypical relationship. But with the narcissist one thing that they can't do is they cannot take any emotional responsibility in relationships. Um, they basically stage their lives and everything they do, it's all about avoiding taking responsibility. And they tend to put the responsibility on the scapegoat. It could be their partner or or whatever. Like they put the responsibility on others. They, they, they behave in a way where they're never... Um, where they just avoid any kind of, um, you know, personal responsibility. Like that you just, they'll never hear them say, you know, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings or, you know, what did I do to hurt you? Or how can I, um, you know, figure out a way so that I'm not hurting you? They just cannot, they absolutely refuse. Um, they do not, oh, and part of it, um, part of it too is that like, they, they have this inability to self-reflect, right? They, they, you know, emotionally intelligent people self-reflect. The reason they do that is so that they can learn from their experience and they can, you know, learn from their feelings and they can change it if necessary. Well, narcissists cannot self-reflect. They, they do not have introspection. Um, they, they hide from their feelings and they do that because um, if they looked inward, it would evoke feelings of shame and inadequacy because, you know, at the core of this sort of personality disorder is this, this shame that they are, they're hiding from, right? Um, and they, you know, another thing is they will not apologize. Um, in neurotypical relationships, people apologize. They take responsibility. They, you know, if they've hurt somebody, they apologize. They go to them. They say, I'm sorry, I need to make amends. I know I did this very specific thing to hurt you. What can I do to set it right? Or what can I do to make amends? Um, occasionally a narcissist will do what's a faux apology or a fake apology. It may look something like this. I'm sorry that you were so sensitive to that, or I'm sorry that things turned out the way they did. So you see how that's a deflection of responsibility. It's not, hey, I'm sorry, I cheated on you, I lied to you, I gaslighted you, I know that must have hurt, what can I do to set it right, how can I you know, make amends? They just, you, they, that's not in their repertoire. Um, because it, that would that would be such a bruise to their very very fragile egos. Because remember, they're perfect; they can't be wrong, right? So, um, self reflection is unbearable to a narcissist, mostly because it represents vulnerability, and they equate vulnerability with weakness. And if they looked inside and they self reflected, or they did some sort of introspection, they would see as mature humans see when they do that, that they have flaws like all of us have flaws. And you know, that's okay. We have flaws, we're not perfect, that's okay. But a narcissist can't accept that because they have to be perfect in their minds, right? Um, and they really, the kind of vulnerability that they especially can't handle is any kind of emotional vulnerability. And this is why, one of the many reasons why they avoid honest communication. Um, you cannot expect honesty from a narcissist in a relationship, especially emotional honesty. They find it very, very difficult to, um, or impossible to talk about their feelings, or their, their, to be genuine about their feelings. They may t say a couple little things here and there, but to not to really be genuine about what they're actually feeling. Um, they find it imp almost impossible to forgive people because they look at all people as a threat and they're very hyper vigilant to either perceived or real threats, usually perceived. So they actually are living in a lot of delusion because they're always, you know, expecting that people are out to get them. And, the, you know, this attack that they are expecting is really rarely a real thing, but in their minds, they're very, very delusional in this regard. They're in this high state of alert. 
Um, so for them, life is like a battle zone and, you know, people are, are, you know, they're, they're terrified of people or any sort of vulnerability and they hold grudges and they just can't forgive. They can't offer genuine forgiveness and relationships, which is why they can't make relationships. One of the many reasons they can't make relationships work. If anyone that they're with apologizes, right? and takes responsibility and makes amends and does that sort of a thing, the way the narcissist looks at it is they look at it like that's proof of their superiority, right? Which is so crazy. Um, and they may actually take that apology and use it to further punish the person who's apologizing, right? It's so odd. But so genuine forgiveness is, is not something that is available to them. Um, and that's in part also because they have an inability to forgive themselves. Um, you know, and, and why would they need to forgive themselves? They have this mask of perfection, right? Um, but it's, it's just a mask. And they are really unable, another thing that narcissists are unable to do, which you would expect, these are all things that you would expect in a normal relationship, but these are things that narcissists are unable to do, um, which is to act selflessly or altruistically without a scorecard, without a scoreboard, without keeping track in their minds, right, of what you owe them. So they have no ability to give without expectation in return. Um, if they ever give, it's a ching, 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 ching in their head. Um, they just don't get it. They don't even understand the concept of altruism. It just doesn't, you know, altruism and selflessness, giving without expectations, that is just not even something that narcissists can emotionally understand um, a reason for even doing, they just don't get it. You know, they lack the emotional empathy. Um, they have this very inflated sense of self and they're very entitled. So this sort of altruism, just to give, to be giving, is absolutely beyond their comprehension. Um, and, you know, a lot of this, again, it's, remember, they're very, it's deep wounding at the core and they cannot really understand themselves. They cannot introspect. They cannot self-reflect. They're always in this state of survival, right? So it's always like, um, you know, they're, they're like running through this world in this, you know, state of high alert, thinking that everyone's out to get them. And really, this is because they're locked in this early childhood place where their needs were not met and, you know, their emotional needs. And they, you know, they are trying to deflect and they need, so that's why they're so dependent on external reward because they're very empty inside and they're hiding like their true self has never come out. They're wearing a mask and they are unable to express their real feelings or their real self. They can't face their real feelings. They just can't. They can't even understand themselves. They cannot look inside. That is why genuine um, intimacy is something that they absolutely cannot manage. Um, they have this lack of awareness um, and they have a lack of uh, the emotional complexity um, of sort of emotional nuance and complexity and that which leads to so they just don't have this awareness of like other people's emotions or their own emotions and so this leads to very dichotomous sort of black and white thinking um, they either idealize people or they devalue people you're either up on you know you're up 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 on the pedestal or you're just in you know in the bottom of the barrel um they they see unfortunately the way that they look at relationships is you know they look at it like a game like a bit of a battle they're always in competition with other people and you know they're they're always sort of um they're trapped in this like very lonely sort of self-absorbed like delusional world and if you think about it it's actually pretty sad because like they're living in this like distorted version of reality and they're seeing people as like a threat and you know any sign of vulnerability is in their mind's weakness um you know as you know from Brene Brown's work or a lot of the you know psychologists that are you know sort of coming about recently, you know, we know now that, I mean, we, I've always known, I think a lot of people know that vulnerability is actually this incredible sign of strength because if you are 
strong enough and courageous enough to be vulnerable and to be honest and to be authentic. It's like, yeah, you're exposing your true self and you know, some people aren't going to like it and you might get some guff for it or whatever, but that is a sign of incredible strength and courage, this ability to be able to be emotionally vulnerable because yeah, you can expose yourself to being hurt, you know, welcome to humanity. But again, that's something that a narcissist has never really been able to cultivate. So a lot of this, it's like, you're looking at, you got to, I mean, really think of it almost like, you know, you're dealing with somebody who's almost like a toddler in that they just don't, they haven't evolved emotionally and they have this very low level of emotional intelligence. So, you know, to understand like complexity and nuance of emotions of other people's emotions or their own emotions, it's just not something that that's available for them. So these are some of the things that you may see in a relationship with a narcissist that would normally be in a normal, healthy, neurotypical relationship. And they're just not, they just don't exist in these sorts of relationships. So thanks so much, you guys. I hope you're thriving and have a, a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.